This is a video on multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Uh, first we'll talk about multiplying rational expressions. Uh, when you multiply rational expressions, the first thing you want to do is factor out all the numerators and denominators completely. So anything that can factor should be factored out, uh, and that's in any numerator and any denominator. Once you've done that, you can divide out any common factors, factors between the numerators and denominators. So as long as the factor shows up in both a numerator and denominator, it doesn't matter which fraction it's in, you're allowed to cancel it out. And then step three, you want to multiply as normal for fractions, which really means multiply straight across through the numerators and straight across through the denominators. Let's take a look at an example. So for our first example, multiply, we have x squared plus 7x plus 12 uh, over x squared minus 2x. And we're going to multiply that by x squared minus x minus 2 divided by x squared plus 5x plus 4. Okay, so uh, first, our first step is to uh, factor out everything as much as possible. So I'm going to factor all numerators, all denominators. So for my first numerator here, I have x squared plus 7x plus 12. I'm going to take a look at, see if there's a GCF. In this case, there is no greatest common factor to factor out. I have three terms, and I don't see a number in front of my x squared. So right away, I can make two sets of parentheses. And I need numbers that multiply to a 12 and add to a 7. So we need x in front of each of these because we need an x squared. And numbers that multiply to 12 and add to 7 are a positive 4 and a positive 3. And this will be over factoring down here. x squared minus 2x, that has a greatest common factor of x. So you got to factor out a GCF of x first. And you'll be left with x minus 2. If you factor out an x from each of those, you're dividing an x out. All right, this will be times. Here we got x squared minus x minus 2. There is no GCF for the whole thing. I have three terms, and I don't see a number in front of my x squared. That tells me I can make two sets of parentheses. And since it's x squared, we need x times x. Numbers that multiply to a negative 2 and add to a negative 1 would be a negative 2 and a positive 1, because negative 2 times 1 is a negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 does give us a negative 1. Remember, there's a negative 1 there. And we're going to divide this by x squared plus 5x plus 4. There is no GCF. I have three terms, and I don't see a number in front of my x squared. So again, two sets of parentheses. x in the front of each of them. Any numbers that multiply to 4 and add to 5, well, that would be a positive 4 and a positive 1. Because 4 times 1 gives you 4. 4 plus 1 gives you a positive 5. Now, once you're here, uh, you want to cancel. You can divide out any factors that are common to both the numerator and denominator. And it doesn't matter which fraction they show up in. So as long as it's on different levels, you're allowed to cancel them. So here we've got x plus 4 and x plus 4 in the denominator, so those will cancel out. I have an x plus 3 up here. I don't have any x plus 3s down in the denominator, so I can't cancel that. I have x minus 2 here, which will cancel with this x minus 2 in the denominator. And then x plus 1 over an x plus 1 will cancel here, because one's in the numerator, one's in the denominator. Now if I cancel everything out here, there's really a 1 here. And same thing down here. If you cancel everything in a fraction, there's really a 1 there. Uh, but if I have x plus 3 times 1, that's still just going to be itself. Right? Anything times 1 is just itself. So my numerator is just going to be x plus 3, multiplying straight across here. And my denominator will be x times 1, which is just x. And that's it. That's all you can do with that. Uh, you can't simplify this any further. This x is stuck together with that 3 by that plus sign. All right? So you can't cancel it out with the x in the denominator here. Uh, I like to say that this x is married to that 3 by the plus sign. So you're not allowed to cancel between the numerator and denominator unless there's multiplication going on. Uh, so that's all you can do. So the answer would be x plus 3 divided by x. Now it's simplified. Uh, let's talk about dividing. So to divide rational expressions, uh, we're going to use keep change flip. When I say keep change flip, remember you have a fraction divided by a fraction. You keep the first. All right, so this would be our keep. You change, all right, division to multiplication. So that's the change. And then the flip is you flip that last fraction to be D over C now. So we keep change flip, and this is the same thing, multiply by the reciprocal is really the, the uh, mathematical way of saying it. We want to keep the first fraction the same, change your division to multiplication, and then you're going to flip the last fraction. Once you've done that, now you have a multiplication problem. So you, fo you follow the rules for multiplication uh, that we just did a little while ago. Let's take a look at an example. So we're going to divide x squared minus 7x minus 18 by x squared minus 81. 
we're going to divide that fraction by x plus 16 over x squared plus 6x minus 27. So, first thing we need to do, all right, we're going to keep the first. We're just going to write that exactly as we see it, x squared minus 7x minus 18 over x squared minus 81. We're going to change division and multiplication, so it's going to be times, and now we're going to flip this last fraction. So we're going to have x squared plus 6x minus 27 over 8x plus 16. Once we're here, now we have a multiplication problem. So we're going to follow the rules for multiplication, which means factor everything completely. I have x squared minus 7x minus 18 here. Uh, there is no GCF for the whole thing. I have three terms, and I don't see a number in front of my x squared, so I can make two sets of parentheses right away. We're going to have x and x makes it an x squared. I numbers that multiply to a negative 18 and add to a negative 7, and those numbers would be a negative 9 and a positive 2. Over, I have x squared minus 81 down here. There is no GCF. I have two terms, and when I have two terms, I should check to see if it's the difference of squares. Difference meaning that's a negative sign in between. Squares meaning that each of these has to be a perfect square. And it is, because x squared is x times x, so that's a perfect square. 81 is 9 times 9, so that's a perfect square. So when I have the difference of squares, I can make two sets of parentheses. We need an x squared in front, so we need x times x. And then one of these has to be positive, one has to be negative, because it has to multiply to a negative 81, so we have positive 9 and negative 9. And it'll be times, factoring out the numerator here, we have x squared plus 6x minus 27. There is no GCF. I have three terms. I don't see a number in front of my x squared. So I can make two sets of parentheses. x in the front of each of them. I need numbers that multiply to a negative 27 and add to 6. And those numbers would be a positive 9 and a negative 3. 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. 9 minus 3 does give us 6. And then down here I have 8x plus 16. Uh, there is a GCF here. 8x and 16 have an 8 in common. Remember, you always have to factor a GCF out if you can. And then we have uh, an x plus 2 left over, dividing out 8 from each of those. All right, once we're here, remember you're following the rules of multiplication, which say that anything in the numerator can cancel with anything in the denominator, as long as they're identical. So x minus 9 will cancel with x minus 9 here. This x plus 2 can cancel with this x plus 2, because they're on different levels. This x plus 9 can cancel with this x plus 9 x minus 3 doesn't have anything to cancel with here, and then in the denominator we got 8 here, but that can't cancel with anything up top. So over here, remember, there's really a 1 if you cancel everything. Same thing down here, there's really a 1. And you're just multiplying straight across. 1 times x minus 3, or 1 times anything is just itself. So we get x minus 3 over the denominator is 1 times 8, which is just 8. And our answer would be x minus 3 over 8. Alright, here's one for you to try on your own.